are you gonna get in? Like the entry requirements are the number one thing you need to think about. I've seen people with fives and sixes get into medicine first try. Because there are medical schools that don't even look at GCSE. It's one thing to ask someone else, but how do you know that someone else's information is accurate and up to date? She got a score in the 500 and still got interviews. Like UCAT uni interviews, not just BMAT ones. I researched so much. I was like, I'm gonna get an interview. I wasn't even shocked when I got them because I just knew I would. One way that sixth form sets you up to fail as well is just the way that you just constantly doubt yourself. And it literally starts starts with little things like people saying that your grades aren't good enough or teachers saying that you can't get in you've got no chance of getting in which I'm sorry but I find that ridiculous like you don't look like people who go to that uni you, you're not from the same background you don't go to a private school like you could be the exception not everyone fits the rule I mean it's not one size fits all When it comes to applying for medicine, I honestly don't care what anyone says. Like, no matter your grades, your UCAT, GCSEs, no matter how bad you think they are, there is probably a medical school that will accept them. When I applied, I used this rule. I've made it up myself. I don't think it exists, but I call it the three to one rule. And I feel like if you use this rule to apply, then you're almost guaranteed at least one interview. If you haven't watched my previous video on tips for applying and my year 12 experience, then go watch that because I've talked about pretty much my whole year 12 experience on deciding to do medicine, work experience, tips for getting work experience, how to stand out and make your application look really, really good. I think people always go straight to like, oh, you need work experience, oh, you need like the most obvious. There's other ways to make your application stand out. And if you, in an interview, can mention a book that the interviewer hasn't heard of, and talk about like a new perspective on medicine that hasn't been mentioned before because you've read a different book, that'll, that'll make you stand out. Don't get too down if you haven't managed to get work experience and you haven't managed to do all the other things that everyone else has done. Um, there's other ways to like, to stand out and really like boost your chances because I promise you every single year there's someone who's got like really, really cool work experience like, with a surgeon, with a weird little innovative scientific thing, like, but can they reflect and show empathy and communicate well? No, that is the key thing you're, they're looking for. I also went to a bunch of open days. I literally went to, I think six of them all together. And keep in mind, you only need to apply to four unis because I didn't apply to a fifth option, like a backup. I literally had my heart set on this. Like I knew for a fact if I didn't get in that would be fine like, I'd just reapply and I didn't want to do like the bio biomed transfers which I made a video on there is a bunch of ways to transfer and some of them are easier than others but I just didn't want to do that I just I was like I'm, I'm gonna get in I'm gonna get in if I don't I'll reapply so yeah I've looked at six unis and out of all of them Newcastle was my favorite just because it was the one that was um it was really big big city it had a lot going on it was very like good for teaching it was like a mix of integrated and pbl which is case-based learning so it's not pure pbl which i wasn't a fan of but it's not pure integrated either and then i also went to plymouth which was really nice plymouth was so modern i really like plymouth but it was also cbl which i didn't really like i went to liverpool which was also really modern i wanted somewhere like a little bit modern like i'm not too keen on oxford and cambridge because they're quite outdated or quite traditional I guess you could say but I wanted somewhere modern. I also went to Sunderland which is kind of like nearby to Newcastle. It's a new medical school. They had like a new scheme to try and get more people to apply like they were offering free accommodation for the first year or something. So basically if you went there you'd save a lot of money and I, I think that was one of the reasons why I applied and I think they reduced the offer because of my re requirements like being BAME and family didn't go to uni stuff like that and then I also went to Kiel and I also went to um Hull York and I didn't apply to those two I didn't like those two another reason why you really want to go to these open days is because they're going to talk about the entry requirements which is arguably the most important thing that you need to bear in mind when choosing a medical school like you can choose like oh you want this location you want a big city you want a party life you want nightlife but like are you gonna get in? Like the entry requirements are the number one thing you need to think about. And in my last video, I was yapping on about this, but like research is the number one thing that's gonna determine whether or not you get into medical school. If you're the sort of person that doesn't like Google things, you don't look into the entry requirements, you don't look at the previous stats, what were the last year's UCAT car? If you're not the sort of person that like looks up those things, I'm a little bit worried that like you might be slipping through the net and not actually realizing what you need to get in. So the three to one rule is basically what you're gonna use to determine what four medical schools you're gonna apply to. Three of them are gonna be safe for unis, pretty much unis, you meet all the requirements for, you meet the GCSE, UCAT. So that pretty much means you're guaranteed an interview. 
you're going to do that for three unis and then the last one can maybe be like your dream university maybe it's Oxford and Cambridge maybe for me it was Newcastle because I had my heart set on Newcastle, but my UCAT was awful. I knew I wanted to go to Newcastle, so I was like, I need a high score, I need a high score. So then when I saw my score of like 2,550, I was like, that is just not enough. Like I was literally, I was so, so upset. But because I had this rule, I made up this rule. Three, three of my unis were gonna be super safe. I'm gonna meet the requirements for them. And I did. And then my last one, my uh, three to one, that was gonna be Newcastle, which was gonna be my risky option. And I think this is the best ratio or just strategy to use if you're not sure, um, like if, if you're worried about like, oh, my grades enough, are this enough? They probably are, you just need a research. Like that's the number one thing that determines whether or not you're someone with like below average grades or can get in. Because it's not like you can't get in, like you absolutely can. I've seen people with fives and sixes get into medicine first try because there are medical schools that don't even look at GCSEs. It's just whether or not you know what they are and whether or not you've researched enough. It's one thing to ask someone else, but how do you know that someone else's information is accurate and up to date? Like, don't ask me because my my year that I applied was years ago. So what I know is true, isn't true for you now. For example, back when I applied, Newcastle didn't look at GCSEs, but go check now. I don't know if it's different. Like it might be different now. With my three to one rule, like I chose four unis, Plymouth, Liverpool, Sunderland, Newcastle, based on the first three, I, I researched so much. I was like, I'm gonna get an interview. I wasn't even shocked when I got them because I just knew I would because I'd just done that much research. But then I was shocked when I got the Newcastle one because I thought my score was too low. So I think if you use that three to one rule, you'll probably get in and you'll probably get your three. And then hopefully, you know, if things go well, you'll get your fourth one as well. If you're worried about the UCAT and if you're worried about how to get into competitive medical schools like Newcastle for example one of the key things you need to do I mean when it comes to your research because that's the key thing is you need to like keep track of like their previous admission statistics what I mean by that is for example I'm going to use Newcastle because that's where I go if you go up online and type in like UCAT threshold Newcastle um statistics it will literally if you go digging enough you'll find this table it shows you every single UCAT threshold for the past few years and that is the sort of thing that you need to like know really well you need to have that printed out or you need to have it on your notion board you need to have that information at the top of your mind because when you get your UCAT score you need to know like when you apply through UCAS you at least pass the threshold for the past few years to make it a safe option and if you don't meet the option if you don't meet the threshold for it then it's probably a risky option this is the sort of information that I feel like if you want to be really safe when applying you want to guarantee like yes I'm going to get an interview you need to have this sort of information to the top of your mind and it's the same with GCSEs because like I said earlier, um, for example, Whole York I think uses a point system where it's, it doesn't tell you what GCSEs you need to have, but it's like they use points. And if you go digging enough online, you can find out what points they ask for. So it's not enough, it's not enough just to like look at the website, look at Newcastle entry requirements, Whole York entry requirements. You need to like go digging and find the statistics for it. What do they know is a really good website for this. Like I'll put up um, like a, an example, but it, it will literally tell you like the Whole York breakdown of the point system they use. This isn't on their website because they don't want to share it, but legally they have to share it on this website. What do they know? So if you look on there, use your own GCSEs to try and work out what score you would get. And then that can tell you whether or not you would get in. My friend did this and my friend had, I think average GCSE, she got like five eights, five sevens. But the thing is her UCAT was in the 500s. Like her average was like 560 something, 570 something. And she still applied to UCAT unis and got interviews. Like she got a score in the 500 and still got interviews. Like UCAT uni interviews, not just BMAT ones. She applied to two UCAT, two BMAT, and got four interviews overall. I'm talking a lot about research and going online and stuff. I'm not gonna lie, so I think this is probably, sixth form is probably where my toxic productivity journey started. Like I, sp I made a whole video on this where I was going on about how it's not healthy. Not only is it not healthy, it's probably just a sign of insecurity. Like if you're one of those people that like, works all the time like constantly working you can't sit still you can't get through the day without having to do like a million tasks it's probably it's probably started in sixth form and it probably started with a lot of this researching and finding out and you know i was never satisfied with just the website i was never satisfied with like the medic portal i was like i need to know more i need to find out where it came from i need to find the original source of this information so yeah i say just be mindful of that because toxic productivity if you've got it in sixth form you'll probably carry it with you to uni and uni is the place where it'll probably be tested to the limit and you'll probably if you've not experienced burnout before in sixth form 
you'll definitely experience it at uni that is for sure and it's not like a badge of honor like ugh, i'm going down a tangent but toxic productivity i used to see it as like a badge of honor like oh i'm burnt out i've worked super hard like oh yeah like you know you've worked hard when you're burnt out but i mean you wouldn't be proud when your car runs out of fuel in the middle of the road like it's not something to be proud of it's something to be embarrassed about if anything like toxic productivity is just like running out of food in the fridge like it's not it's not a badge of honor it's something that you want to avoid so if you do feel like you're in sixth form and you notice episodes where you get a little bit more tired than usual or you're just like unmotivated like you've not got the energy even though you want to and you want to get things done that's probably a sign of burnout and it's worth noting and looking out for the signs of burnout and i mean that video that i made the toxic productivity one is all about signs of it and signs that you've got toxic productivity and it's probably signs that it's gone too far. I think sixth form is the place probably to like experiment and learn what sort of habits you want to carry into uni. I'm going to talk about this more in my next video, but a lot of the habits that you have at sixth form, I can see it in myself. A lot of my habits that I had in sixth form, I took with me to uni, like to the point where you can almost predict your uni experience based on your sixth form experience. Or maybe I'll rephrase that actually, like you can almost predict your first year experience based on your sixth form experience. But for sixth form, like for example, patterns like me being really shy and scared to reach out i had that in first year me being really like toxic with my work working super hard working too much i had that i never really did sport i never really did exercise barely went to the gym i had that in first year i mean it's the same like if you're bouncing from relationship to relationship because i mean i wouldn't do that in sixth form but i know some people did and oh, from snapchats and stuff that i've kept up to date with and i've kept you know when you keep an eye on people from previous like years of school like people don't change that much you think you're all in different unis different cities across the uk but like you're all kind of the same as you were before like if you met up with a person from sixth form that you've not seen in ages they probably not changed as much as you think they have one thing i would say is i think throughout sixth form i remember i was really stressed about my gcse's weren't the best it was five eights five seven and two sixes i was only stressed about that for a very short period of time if you are worried about your grades genuinely whatever your grades are instead of worrying too much about it and trying to ask lots of people because like i said we might be wrong the more nervous you are honestly just channel that into like just being really determined and like looking up things online and just going out and applying for work experience which i touched on in my last video don't let it get you down because if, if you let it get you down then then maybe you won't get in you know because if you let the doubt sit in your mind you can't do it you're not smart enough that is going to stop you because you won't keep pushing but if you do keep pushing then you'll actually get in then you'll get the interview then you'll get the offer one way that sixth form sets you up to fail as well is just the way that you just constantly doubt yourself which i'm not gonna lie it's like Oh, it's I don't know what the word is but you know when those things slowly creep up on you and then it kind of like ruins your whole plan or it ruins just everything that you had going like self-doubt and doubting yourself and feeling like oh I'm not gonna make it I'm not gonna get in like you want to avoid that at all costs and it literally starts with little things like people saying that your grades aren't good enough or teachers saying that you can't get in you've got no chance of getting in which I'm sorry but I find that ridiculous like teachers have no place talking about you have no chance getting in here you can't get into medical school like what do you know you're a teacher anyway don't if anyone in your journey has said that to you or made you feel like that it could even be siblings and parents which like do not believe them because i've seen so many inspiring people to be honest people who you never even think have gotten into uni people who you'd think oh my god how have you defied the odds and managed to get into medical school people do it every single year people do it all the time because you absolutely can do anything you set your mind to i'm i'm so confident and believing in that if you've got a goal to get into medical school to get into to uni oxford cambridge whatever you absolutely can there's nothing stopping you teachers act like the people who get into medical school are like all the same you don't look like people who go to that uni you, you you're not from the same background you don't go to a private school like you could be the exception not everyone fits the rule i mean it's not one size fits all is it like there's always someone who's like the extraordinary or the exception and you genuinely could be that person don't think the extraordinary isn't you or isn't what you're capable of okay i ended this video on like a little bit of a motivational motivational point but thank you so much for watching this video and um, make sure to subscribe because i'll have plenty more videos like this coming up and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye